Uh, thank you, Minister, for your uh, informative address. Um, I was really interested to hear you talk about uh, the need for new models of care that uh, uh, are efficient and uh, effective. Um, in your 2008 Community Health at the Crossroads report, uh, option four recommended the integration of uh, the primary health care and community health sectors. Uh, and that's a recommendation that's been backed up by three national health reform reports, plus the health and hospitals agreement of last year and confirmed by the uh, COAG meeting just a few weeks ago. Um, what are your plans if you're re-elected on March the uh, 26th to uh, effect a transition that will see community health and uh, primary healthcare sectors being uh, combined, particularly in the context of the formation of uh, Medicare locals and local health networks? Mm. Thanks, thanks. It's an important question and I think to a certain extent we did all of that really um, careful work in looking at how we deliver community health services but then the implementation of what came out of that process was uh, in, in some ways delayed or interrupted by the COAG agreement and the desire to see the transfer of some primary care services to the Commonwealth. Of course that's now subsequently changed again as a result of the heads of agreement we reached in February. And I think from New South Wales's perspective we are not unhappy about that. We certainly see great importance in the development of the primary health care networks or the Medicare locals because it is one of the ways that we are going to be able to strengthen primary care services and that matters for people and it also matters because of the pressure on our public hospitals. Uh, but we always felt the model that was initially agreed upon by COAG uh, paid more attention to the way community health and primary health was delivered on, and, and organised in other states. So now I think we've got a real opportunity to move forward on some of the things that you have, um, that you have highlighted. We've started some good discussions, as I understand, with the Commonwealth about how we can work with them to get that integration across primary health care services and what we deliver in the community. One of the things that was really um, impressed upon me in the consultations we did uh, as we uh, moved around the state to set up our local health networks was the fact that we deliver in the community many specialist services. They're specialist services but delivered from a community health location and I think that's something that is quite different to what other uh, community uh, health centres do in other states. And that to me is important to maintain. There was a lot of support for that as I moved around the state. So we are moving forward but we're going to have to work closely with the Commonwealth and to a certain extent it does depend on their time frame for setting up their Medicare locals and I don't underestimate the challenges that are there for the Commonwealth to do that. But we're committed to working with them and to trying to assist in whatever way we can and to then get that better integration between our community health services and primary health care. Thank you. Next, uh, Dr. Bronwyn Ross, Chair of the New South Wales RACMA. Thank you, Minister Tebbett, and um, I'll leave a lot of the issues you raised to my colleagues. Um, I'm here representing the Royal Australasian College of Medical Administrators. Um, traditionally, at lo the local hospital level, um, the role of the Director of Medical Services uh, was the go-to person for the medical staff to input medical um, decisions into the executive level of the hospital and to deal with day-to-day -day medical issues management. Um, these positions in New South Wales and the training positions beneath them have been undermined and deleted across the board over the last 10 to 15 years, unlike other states such as Queensland that have really embraced medical administrators as the way forward at a local executive level. Um, the training program that I trained in in New South Wales is completely defunct and there are no training, there is no training um, program in public hospitals in New South Wales. And a lot of the talent in this area have moved into the private sector, the not-for-profit and the Commonwealth. Um, in the new local health hospital network structure, there are mandated positions for directors of finance and a director of nursing. Um, but not the Director of Medical service, Services or their, the training positions beneath them. And I'm wondering why full-time medical managers trained in, trained in medicine are not a valuable part of executive teams in New South Wales. 
Well, look, um, I, I, I don't know that I can answer the specifics of the question that you've asked. I certainly can say that in the establishment of the local health networks, we worked very hard in order to try and provide the mechanisms for greater clinician engagement. We established the executive medical director positions as part of our response to the Garling Review, and uh, I'm not aware that the LHNs is going to undermine that commitment. Um, we set up the governing councils and we worked closely with uh, both the AMA but also the Nurses Association and the HSU to try and ensure that on the governing councils we've got good clinical representation. We took a different position to uh, what the, um, the COAG agreement actually provided for by saying we wanted local clinicians on our governing councils. We've set up our clinical councils, so uh, I think that we are well advanced in providing the mechanisms for greater clinician engagement. Um, the detail of the, the, the positions that you have referred to, I'd, I'd have to come back to Next, you on Mr Luke Clark from the RACP. Uh, thank you, and thank you, Minister. My question relates to uh, coordinated and integrated care, and that includes uh, integrated uh, systems as well. So uh, what can you detail relating to, to promote uh, coordinated and integrated care uh, at a system level? So, for example, how would, in the national health reform, uh, local hospital networks connect to Medicare locals? Um, and would you see a role for uh, lead clinician groups, both at the local level or at the national level, to, to connect that, uh, those systems so that the right care can be delivered at the right time and, most importantly, in the right setting? Yeah, look, I think it's a, it's a really important point that you raise, and it was one of, I guess, our great aspirations of what we hope will come out of uh, national health reform. And there's no doubt that the establishment of the Medicare locals and the establishment of the local health networks provide that opportunity. We have um, made it clear to the Commonwealth that we would like to see as much as possible an alignment of the boundaries of the Medicare locals and the local health networks. It won't be possible in every instance, but I think that will help deliver that kind of uh, integration between the two entities. We've also uh, indicated that on the um, governing councils there'll be a position for the Medicare local, for, for a member from the board of the Medicare local of the governing council of the Medicare local to be on our governing councils. Um, the lead clinician groups is what was a commitment that the federal government made. We had already prior to that announced that we would have clinical councils in New South Wales established in hospitals or, or, or sometimes across a, number, a couple of hospitals if that's what clinicians felt worked more effectively. Uh, when the Commonwealth made their announcement about um, lead clinician groups, uh, I had a discussion with the Federal Health Minister to say we wanted to make sure that in New South Wales that worked in with our clinical councils and the Federal Government were quite amenable to that, but I think there's still a bit more work to be done. I know they've got their, their paper out at the moment. I think they're consulting around how the, lead, um, clinician, how the lead clinical groups would work. So I think there's a bit more work to be done to make sure that those two uh, bodies in New South Wales don't overlap and duplicate each other. But yes, we're certainly committed to uh, better integration. And look, I think programs like our chronic disease management program have demonstrated what we can achieve, and Health Ones for that matter, um, they've really demonstrated what we can achieve when we try and put some structures in place that allow for that better coordination between uh, primary care, between GPs and the acute care system. And next, uh, Dr Tony Sarah from the State and Federal ASMOF. Thank you, very much. Thank you Minister, for coming today. Um, I represent staff specialists. Staff specialists, as most of us would be aware, form a major plank of a good public health system. They certainly do that in New South Wales. So we're interested to know what does the Labor Party intend to do in the next term to ensure recruitment and retention strategies are optimal to make sure that we continue to provide a good public health system? Well, look, I think a range of things. I think that people will want to work in the public health system if they feel it is well run well resourced and has a high morale. Now, we have committed to investing more funding in providing specialty training, so I need to highlight that. But I think also things that we're doing, like the agreement we've reached with, with the Nurses Association to invest in more nurses in our public health system will make a huge difference. One of the things that uh, has come back very clearly to me in the time that I've been Health Minister is that people feel 
when they're in the public hospital system that the staff do a fabulous job, but they're very, very busy and they're very, um, they're, they're, they run off their feet. And so we have to find ways to address that because that does then impact on, on staff morale. Now for nurses, the agreement that we've reached with them uh, to increase the number of nurses in our public health system will make a big difference. I think the employment of clinical support officers uh, to try and take some of the administrative and reporting load of frontline clinicians, doctors and nurses is having a good impact. I think many of the um, many of the commitments that we made in response to Peter Garling's review are starting to now have an impact on the health system and to improve morale. Uh, the establishment of the four pillars so that we do have the Agency for Clinical Innovation, the Clinical Excellence Commission, the um, SETI and also um, the Bureau for Health Information. So we've got transparent reporting about what happens in the health system. I do think that workforce and the way we deliver training is still a big issue for us and we've got a lot more work to do to get that, more, to get that working more effectively. Uh, SETI will help, I have no doubt about that, but it's a big task and one that we need to uh, really focus our efforts on because I think if we can get that right, that will make a huge difference for everyone who's working in the health system.